Hello. In this session, we will create a post-process transition for a scene reminiscent of memories using materials and blueprints. First, we create a material. Then we set the blend mode to post-process. To capture the entire background screen, we create a Scene Texture node and set the Scene Texture ID to Post Process Input 0. Next, we create a component mask and connect it to the Scene Texture node, setting the R, G, B channels to ensure that the background displays all color channels. We then copy the component mask and set it to a single channel to make a black and white background appear. Following that, we create a Blend Overlay node and by pressing the number 3 on the keyboard and clicking, create a constant 3 vector node. After setting the desired color in the constant 3 vector node, we use the blend overlay node to add color to the black and white screen. We then slightly adjust the contrast of the black and white screen using power and parameter nodes. The parameter node can be created by pressing the letter S on the keyboard and clicking. Next, we create a LERP node and connect nodes as shown in the video to allow the screen to transition based on the alpha value of the LERP node. Let's now create the gradient used for the screen transition. We create a radial gradient exponential node that can make a circular shape. Then we create a texture sample node and set it to the water texture provided by the engine content. We create a subtract node and subtract the texture from the circular gradient so that the texture appears in a circular shape inside. Next, we create a text chord node to set the UV of the texture and use multiply and parameter nodes to allow the setting of UV values. Next, we create a Panner node to move the texture, set the speed of the texture's movement, and connect the nodes as shown in the video to animate the texture. We place an Add node between the Multiply and Panner nodes to add additional noise to the texture node. Next, as shown in the video, we enable Engine Content in the Content Drawer setting to make use of Engine Content. Then we add the Motion 4-Way Chaos node to the material from the engine content. We create a Texture Object node, set it to the Water Normal Texture, and connect it to the Motion 4-Way Chaos to randomize the movement of the texture. Next, we copy the nodes that were setting the UV for the texture and connect them to the Motion 4-Way Chaos node. using constant nodes to set the divisor and speed of the motion 4-way chaos. The constant node can be created by pressing the number 1 and clicking. Using a component mask node, we connect to the motion 4-way chaos node to add texture noise and use a multiply node to set the intensity of the noise. We then create two add nodes and a parameter node. The parameter node, named Amount, will be used later in the blueprint to determine the degree of screen transition. Next, we connect the parameter node to the radial gradient node and the add nodes as shown in the video. Adjusting the value of the parameter node, you can see that the size of the circular gradient is adjustable. We connect a power node to the add node to set the contrast of the circular gradient so that noise does not appear outside the circle. We use a saturate node to clamp the color values of the circular gradient between 0 and 1. Now, connecting the saturate node to the alpha pin of the lerp node and adjusting the parameter value, you can see the screen transition according to the parameter value.
Next, we find the character's blueprint. Click to open the window. In the Construction Script node, we create a Create Dynamic Material Instance node and create variables for it. We set the material we initially created to the Create Dynamic Material Instance node to change the material to a dynamic material. Next, we retrieve the component of the camera to which post-process will be applied and bring up the post-process settings. Using the dynamic material variable, we create a make-weighted blendable node to make the post-process appear and use a make-array node to add it to the post-process array. Then, using the make-weighted blendable node and make-post-process settings node as shown in the video, we set up the post-process with the dynamic material. We then create a keyboard event node and set the desired key. Next, we create a flip-flop node that alternates events as the key is pressed repeatedly. We create a timeline node that can change values over time and create a track for the timeline as shown in the video. After creating the track, we connect it to the flip-flop node. We retrieve the dynamic material variable and create a set scalar parameter value node. We write amount in the set scalar parameter value node to adjust the value of the amount parameter. Finally, we connect the timeline to the set scalar parameter value node so that the amount value can change according to the timeline's track. Now, when you run the level and press the key set in the blueprint, you can see the screen transition.